when I was growing up, they say uh, we we uh, uh, my parents shortly after I was born, I was the youngest. Uh, we relocated, and I was born in 1965. We uh, relocated from north side of Chicago, it was a, you know, large Jewish area, to Skokie, which was, uh, as I learned recently upon taking a tour, Skokie um, is a little bit away from the lakefront, and the more quote unquote desirable areas were a little bit closer to the lake, but those areas were restricted. Areas like Wilmette and Winneka that Jews really, really did, you know, didn't want to move in there, where Skokie was a little bit more. Um, Open and let me, you know, wasn't quite as whatever we're terming pretentious as some of those other areas. Goki, at least where we live, sometimes they call it Skevinston now because Evanston's uh, right across what we call the canal, and so you had a lot of uh, African Americans, uh, you know, moving into Evanston or, or in Evanston. So our, our our school was very mixed. It was like half, you know, half black and and half um, half white with a lot of Jewish kids in it, and so you know, so we we all grew up. You know, up to that time, where you know, where we had like a lot of African American friends, it was no big deal. So, Stokey was certainly in the news in 1977, yeah. uh, when the neo Nazis wanted to march mm. there. At that time, one out of every six citizens in Skokie was either a survivor or was re directly related yeah. to a survivor of the Holocaust. Do you remember that time? Yeah, I remember that time real well. You know, we were in the process of moving, but. Uh, you know, but I was there for part of it, and then I would be coming back to Skokie uh, to visit friends. And uh, excuse my language, but you know, you know, people were pissed. Even uh, you know, even even young kids, you know, were were just like very angry that these guys would dare, you know, come into you know, come into our community. As I say, at the age of twelve, I wouldn't necessarily understand everything, everything, but um, but I w I just understand that people were mad. So even like my friends who I go to Hebrew school with. You know, and they said if you know if the Nazis came into Skokie, you know they were gonna go on, go down there with, with eggs and go down there with baseball bats, with whatever they had, you know, to to fight against them. So you know, so uh, everyone was really, uh, you know, the you know the Jewish people that I remember from that time. They you know they you know they they weren't gonna <coughs> excuse me, they, they weren't gonna put up with this you know just like laying down and and things along those lines. Um, and uh, even the the f actually the summer of '77, my uh, through business, my dad w uh, won a trip uh, to uh, Vienna, so we took us all to Vienna. So that was very nice, and and we met with uh, 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 Simon Wiesenthal, you know, who, the famous Nazi hunter. And so uh, we we remember he discussed with us how he would you know deal with the Nazis if the, if the, if they came to you know in terms of Skokie. So his idea was to do like a counter demonstration, just trying to. You know, just show you know the ludicrous uh, how ludicrous this whole thing is, and just have a counter demonstration. And then I came back, and I was at, at that time maybe I was at Hebrew High School, so maybe it was like '78. And I showed that you know I talked to one of the teachers there. I said, "Well, Simon Wiesenthal's idea was to have a counter demonstration." And this guy looked at me and said, "Well, he doesn't live here, and he can't tell us what this, that, and the other." So this guy. The Hebrew high school teacher was just, as I say, also very riled up, and he didn't want to just have a counter demonstration. They wanted to, you know, actively, physically oppose, you know, anybody that that would come in the area with all that, uh, with all that garbage.